if you followed the story, you were able to see, quote unquote, or hear that this man was born blind and that when he obeyed the command of Jesus to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, he came back with his eyesight restored. He came back with his health restored. But not only did he come back with his physical eyesight restored, he came back with the gift of faith. He had the eyes to see who Jesus really was. And so the story progresses as he's being questioned by the Pharisees. Who was it that healed you? I don't know, this man called Jesus. He just spat on the ground and made some clay and he smeared it on my eyes and he told me to go wash and I came back to see. And what's interesting, the Pharisees, who are the keepers of the law, the stewards of the covenant that God has established between himself and the people, they're the ones who are really blind. They cannot see. They do not have the eyes to see what this blind man is able to see in his heart. And so he calls him the man Jesus, and slowly, through his coming to faith, the prophet Jesus. And then finally, bowing down and worship him and calling him Lord Jesus. And so there are two components that I necessarily want to focus on this morning. The first was what happened in the first reading when Samuel anointed David as king. He poured the oil on him and anointed him, and the scripture said from that moment on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. He rushed upon David as his chosen, as his anointed. And the second component that I want to focus on is what happened to this blind man when he was told to go and wash. That he came back with his sight restored, but more importantly, he came back with a gift of faith in order to be able to see what he really needed to see. There are so many people in the world who have perfect 2020 vision, but they are blind when it comes to God who reveals himself in the person of Jesus Christ. And so all of us at birth are blind, all of us. But when we wash in the pool, that's where we're given the eyes to see. That's where we are given the gift of faith. That's what you're going to receive, Lisa, when you're baptized. And as you're baptized and you're washed in that pool, I'm going to anoint you with oil, just as Samuel anointed David. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to rush upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is going to rush upon you. But I want to point out that all of the physical healings that Jesus performed while he was in his public ministry, all of the eyes that were opened, all the people who were lame who were healed, even those he raised from the dead, was simply to point out a much greater miracle that was taking place. The Jesus who had the power to heal these people also had the power to forgive their sins, which was a much greater disease than anything that afflicted their body. Because the sin that afflicts our soul is for eternity. 
unless it is washed away, unless it is forgiven. And so we're not commanded to just wash once in the pool. Because although we wash and our sins are washed away, we continue as people throughout our lives to offend God. Most of the time that when we offend God, it isn't because we purposely do it. Heaven knows we experience those kinds of things from other people sometimes and they don't intend it. But some of the greatest sins that we commit are not the things that we do, they are the things that we fail to do. When we fail to act in love, when we fail to act in charity, when we fail to act in justice, we offend God. And not only do we offend God, we wound one another. And so there is a principle here that's at work. Jesus is teaching us through the healing of this man born blind that as his physical eyesight was restored, so was the eyesight given in his heart to be able to see. So there's a principle here. Jesus is teaching us that whatever applies to the body applies to the soul. Whatever we say about the body, we say about the soul. It's a measurement. It's an axiom. And so I don't think I would have to convince anyone in church this morning about the necessity of good personal and oral hygiene. We know we need to wash. And we have to wash frequently, daily. And we don't necessarily wash daily because we're dirty. We wash because of the bacteria which accumulates on our bodies and in our mouth. My dentist is always telling me about good oral hygiene. See? And she should. That's her job. My doctor is always telling me about good personal hygiene. And he should. That's his job. But your priest is constantly going to remind you about good spiritual hygiene. It's my job. And so if we have to wash our bodies, not because they're necessarily dirty, but in order to stay healthy, how do we wash the soul? It is amazing to me that we understand the importance and necessity of cleansing and what it does. But when I mention confession, it all goes out the window. I watched Pope Francis himself go to confession yesterday, publicly. If you got a computer, right on YouTube. He was going to hear confessions, and before he heard confessions, he said to the priest who was guiding him to the confessional, wait a minute, and he went over to the confessional, and he knelt down, and he publicly went to confession so everybody could see him. What is he saying? What message is he sending? You know that if you don't wash on a frequent basis, you know you could get sick. There's a dentist right here. And there, are there any doctors and nurses in here this morning? There's a nurse right here. Good, a doctor and a nurse. Can you get sick from not washing? You can get sick from not washing. Could you die if you didn't wash? Is it possible to die? Yeah, you can die from not washing because bacteria has that effect. And so what about failing to wash the body, the soul? You can get sick. You can, and your wounds get infected. And you see, here's the deal. Most people, all of us, we all know we're sinners. But you know what the net effect of failing to go to confession on a frequent basis is? We don't know what our sins are anymore. We don't know what our sins are anymore. That's why oftentimes when people come into the confessional, bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been a year since my last confessional. And they struggle to come up 
with your sins. Why? Because of failing to wash and they're going blind. They're going blind. And failing to wash the soul, you can actually die. And it's a much more devastating effect than dying a physical death because dying spiritually has eternal consequences. Dying spiritually has eternal consequences. And so Jesus reinforces, the church reinforces, the Holy Father reinforces, your pastor reinforces the necessity of constantly washing. Washing. So Bishop Labashi has asked all of the priests on Monday of Holy Week, all of the parishes, every priest in the diocese is going to be in the confessional on Monday of Holy Week from 11 to 1 p.m. and from 5 to 7 p.m. And I'll be, I'll be in my shower over there. See? And so we're inviting you to come. And by the way, I'm running a special. You all like specials. Come on. You look for them at Walmart all the time. How many of you collect coupons when you go to the grocery store? See, you're all coupons. You want, what do you, you want discounts and you want, I'm offering a discount. Okay? Anyone who comes to confession to me during Lent is going to get my Lenten special. Your penance is going to be one Hail Mary. What a deal, huh? <laughs> but the best, the best thing is, okay, not what you're going to get from me, what you're going to get from him. We do not sin because we're bad people. We sin because we're weak and we're wounded people. And so the grace of the sacrament strengthens that which is weak and that which is wounded. That's why you go to confession, not because you're bad. God does not make bad people. But good people make bad choices. And so the Pope, through his own actions, is exhorting all of us. It's time to get washed. Time to get washed. We need to be clean, okay, in order to offer the sacrifice. Do you know that as baptized, you're baptized priest, prophet, and king? But if you read in the Old Testament, the priests of the Old Testament, before they offered the sacrifice, they had to wash. That cleansing was an outward sign of what needed to be inside. And so we invite you, come and get washed. Come take a spiritual shower. You know how you feel when you get out of the shower in the morning? You feel like a million bucks, especially after working hard all day? Well, come take a spiritual shower. Come get cleansed. Lisa, you're going to get cleansed for the first time, okay, on Easter Vigil. And I wish it were me because the benefits you're going to get, I'm jealous of. All the temporal punishment due for a lifetime of sin, gone. See? And so you're going to be washed, anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is going to rush upon you just as it rushed upon every one of the baptized here. But frequent washing good spiritual hygiene in order to stay healthy.